Wait, are we recording? If you're watching this video right now, congrats on getting into Penn. Or alternatively, good luck with your college decisions. An aspect of college life that will drastically shape your experience is housing. Because Penn requires you to live on campus for your freshman and sophomore year, which dorm you get will determine your initial social circle, how far you need to walk to classes, and if you live in your own room in a suite, or if you need to find a roommate. With all that at stake, we have a lot of houses to get through, so let's just hop into the housing breakdown. So freshman dorm options are particularly unique this year and the next two years because the main freshman living space, the quad, is currently renovating the bathrooms and common areas. The quad is made up of three fully freshman houses, which are Reapy, Fisher, and Ware. All of them are right next to each other and look pretty similar. While they're absolutely gorgeous on the outside with a particularly iconic courtyard, the unrenovated houses have some of the worst facilities on campus, with common areas that people tend to spend very little time at. And notoriously bad bathrooms. The rooms themselves are decently sized though, even having sinks in them. However, the trade-off is that the quad is the most social spot on campus. With three whole college houses right next to each other and the reputation of the quad, you tend to get a lot of people who are frequent partiers and who love to socialize. Especially in the beginning of the year, you'll have a lot of people coming back home late. In terms of location, it's pretty central, being just south of where most classes are located. The quad is home to one of my favorite dining locations, McClelland, because it serves sushi, but unfortunately, it is one of the few non-all-you-can-eat places. Overall, the quad is defined by its beautiful architecture, but outdated facilities, and outgoing residents. Right next to the quad is Stouffer College House, which recently finished their renovations, and it shows. They have plenty of common areas like study lounges and a fully furnished club lounge which looks like it came straight out of an Ikea with a kitchen and a pool table. Even the bathrooms are nice with them all being their own individual rooms. The rooms themselves are also very large with a lot of room to host people and store everything you bring. People in Stouffer tend to get close to each other creating a tight-knit community. It's also right next to the quad so it shares a lot of the pros and cons of the location of the quad. Overall, Stouffer is defined by its extremely nice rooms and facilities and its tight-knit community. Next we have Kings Court English College House, also known as K-Check, which is a combination of both Kings Court and English houses. The facilities in K-Check are pretty middle of the road, with not many common areas outside of the lobby in Kings Court and the garden in between both houses, which is admittedly really pretty. The differences between Kings Court and English is that English House has a sink, while Kings Court has a larger closet space. The bathrooms are mostly whatever. K-Check also has its own dining hall, which serves smoothies for breakfast. Everyone in K-Check is super down to earth and they tend to have a very wholesome community. It's in a pretty central location, just being more north compared to the quad being more south, which means it's close to the gym paw truck and also close to hill and water. Overall, K-Check is defined by its larger rooms and more wholesome community. The other main first year living option is Hill College House, which happens to be my college house. It has nice modern facilities with a gym, kitchen, and dance lounge, along with relatively clean bathrooms and its own dining hall, which is open pretty often, and it's all you can eat. However, the room size of the doubles are known for being the smallest on campus. The bright side to these small rooms is that it leads to people working in the floor lounges for each color or in the Hill Study Lounge, which is where I've met a lot of my closest friends. Because Hill residents tend to spend so much time in common areas, they tend to get very close to each other, with people from houses like Lauder even coming to socialize in the lounges as well. The main downside is it's pretty far east compared to other college houses, so unless you're taking a lot of classes in the engineering quad or in DRL, the math building, you're going to be pretty far away from the classes that are more central on campus, like those in Huntsman, the Wharton building. 
overall. Hill is defined by its modern facilities and close community, which is made possible by the frequent study lounges and small rooms. Last for the all-freshman housing is Lauder College House, which only this year was made into all-freshman housing to account for the renovations in the quad. It was extremely popular in housing selection because it has some of the nicest, cleanest facilities like a giant study room and floor lounges with really nice views. But more importantly, it's all suite style, so everyone has their own single. Each suite has its own living room with couches and a TV, and they also have their own bathroom and sink. Each room is pretty well sized for a person, with a bed, desk, dresser, and plenty of cabinet space to store all your clothes. And while the well sized living rooms make for a great spot to host your friends, the downside for meeting new people is that people tend to spend a lot of time in either their room or their suite, meaning that people only really get close to their suite mates. In terms of location, it shares a lot of traits with Hill. Good for Hill dining hall fans and engineering students, bad for pretty much anything else. It does have its own dining hall, but it's a dinner only dining hall. It's not that bad though. Not excellent. Because of their proximity, those in Lauder who want to meet more people tend to frequent the Hillside Lounge. Overall, Lauder is defined heavily by its sweet style living and nice facilities on the east side of campus. The last three houses, Gutman, Gregory, and Dubois, are all four-year houses, which have slightly different vibes compared to freshman houses. I think that living in fully first-year houses is superior, as upperclassmen are not really as open to meeting new people as freshmen are. So you lose a bit of that pure experience of having hundreds of people all being super open and trying to meet new people. Additionally, as all upperclassmen housing is, it's on the west side of campus, but it's further from the quad and especially Hill and Lauder, so it's harder to make friends with people in those houses. However, all of these houses are suites, so that's a plus. Let's begin with Gutman, which is easily the nicest house available to freshmen. It's like Lauder on steroids. Unfortunately for some of you watching this video, it's only going to be available for the class of 28, as it's normally all for upperclassmen. However, for those of you who got in this year, you should try and take advantage of it if facility quality is what you're after. Starting on the outside, it has a wide courtyard and a nice balcony to overlook the courtyard. Because it was built a few years ago, it's the most recently built college house, so it has plenty of extremely nice common study areas, multi-purpose rooms, a dance lounge, a massive kitchen, and open lounges on each floor. Within the suites themselves, they have a living room with furniture provided, but no TV, and a sink and a bathroom. The rooms themselves have full-size desks that make for an excellent view while studying, and also its own bed and dresser. Overall, Gutman is defined by its extremely modern and beautiful design, and basically allowing freshmen to live in upperclassmen housing for a year. Next we have Gregory, which is a house that I have not ever been to before I had to film this video. Most of the facilities are alright, with a large variety of common areas such as study spaces, multi-purpose rooms, and its own movie theater where they frequently host screenings. Most of the suites have no living room, with just a sink and a bathroom, but make up for it with a rather spacious individual room. Compared to the other suites, the rooms don't feel as cramped, but rather extremely well-sized. Compared to Gutman and Dubois, it's closer to Quad and Sofer, but still pretty far from everything. Overall, Gregory is defined by its suites that give large individual rooms at the sacrifice of its living room and also being in a pretty distant location. Finally, we have Du Bois. Du Bois is historically known for being a safe and welcoming space for black students, but recently it started to lessen that focus. The common areas are pretty underwhelming as there's not too much outside of the main study lounge, but the suites themselves are all highlighted by the fact that they all have their own kitchen. Additionally, the rooms are not too small, the bathroom is passable, and most have a living room. Because it is the smallest college house, people tend to get to know each other pretty well. However, it is pretty far from all the other freshman housing, so you have that to deal with. Overall, Dubois is defined by it being the only dorm to offer an in-suite kitchen and for it being a historically welcoming place for black students. Those are all the freshman houses at Penn. While that was a lot of information, I just want to give four more general tips on housing. First, roommates can be very hit or miss. 
While my roommate Jen and I get along really well, and he's definitely added to my college experience, I understand that that is not the norm. People can get into conflicts with their roommates really often, so unless you have someone that you think you can get along with, I would try and go for a single, but just know that it could work out pretty well. There are very few triples, so I'd recommend going for a single or just taking a lot of time to try and get to know people and reach out early on to try and find someone you can room with. Second, suites are very nice, but buildings with suites tend to have people stay inside their room or inside their suite to study, and you tend to meet less people that way. So you may bond more with your suite mates, but you'll meet less people overall, which is kind of the point of freshman year. Third, while especially a problem in Hill, most college houses don't have good lighting built in. Go on a case-by-case -case basis, but you'll probably need a lamp, and, you know, investing in LED lights couldn't hurt and could spice up your room a little. Lastly, try to live in a college house that already has a lot of the amenities there. A house with its own dining hall, for example, is really, really nice for days where either the weather is bad or you're just lazy and don't want to walk too far for breakfast. Plus, having public study spots allows you on most nights where you're studying late to not have to trek back from the library in the dark and just go straight to bed. With all that being said, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, see ya!